Hey everybody, Morgan here. So we're going to do an answer key for the precipitation reactions. And even though the instructions say to write a balanced molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic, I'm only going to do that for the first one. And we're just going to go to the net ionic because that's all that we'll really be grading you on for our tests uh, in the future. So in this first one, if we do our molecular, we do a partner exchange and we get Ag2CO3 and NaNO3. To balance it, we're going to need to put a 2 there and we're going to need to put a 2 there. Now according to our solubility rules, nitrates are always soluble, so that's going to be an aqueous. Silver precipitates with just about everything, so that's going to be our solid. Okay. Now, for our complete ionic, 2 Ag plus aqueous, 2 Na plus aqueous, plus a carbonate, which is aqueous, to give us our Ag2CO3 solid, plus 2 Na plus aqueous, and 2 NO3 minus aqueous. Now the nitrates on both sides are going to cancel and the sodiums on both sides are going to cancel and that's going to leave us with 2 Ag plus aqueous and a CO3 to minus aqueous to give us an Ag2 CO3 solid and that right there for number one. Okay, now looking at number two, partner exchange. We get NIS and we get KCL, two KCLs, okay? Now, this one, two, two, yeah, that's all balanced out. This chloride, that's pretty aqueous. Nickel sulfide likely going to precipitate, okay? So what I do to bypass having to do that complete ionic is I'm gonna go NIS solid. What things go into that? That's gonna be my nickel two plus aqueous and my S two minus aqueous. Okay, there's my net ionic. Partner exchange for number three, NaOH plus KCl. Now you know what? These are both aqueous because they both have group one metals in them. So no reaction here. RxN, our nice abbreviation for reaction. Okay. Next one down here, number four, partner exchange, Cu, OH sub 2, plus Na2, SO4. I'm going to need a 2 in front of my NaOH. So this has got a group 1 metal. Those are always aqueous. They're always soluble. Copper hydroxide is not. <clears throat> when we're dealing with transition metals and hydroxides, uh, we're getting precipitates. So our precipitate is CuOH sub 2 solid. So I've got a Cu2 plus plus 2OH minus, both of these being aqueous, giving me CuOH sub 2 solid. Okay. Here we've got a BaSO4 and an FeNO3 sub 2. Two. Okay, nitrates are always soluble, so that's an aqueous. Barium sulfate, that's our famous precipitate that we drink when we're getting medical imaging done. Okay, it's completely toxic, but it's also insoluble, so our body can't absorb it, and we just poop it right out. Okay, what does that give us? BaSO4 solid. What ions are going into there? Ba2 plus aqueous and SO4 2 minus aqueous. Okay. Our next.
next one. AG2S and NaNO3. Now, I'm going to have to put a 2 there, and I'm going to have to put a 2 there for that to balance out. Okay? This is aqueous because it's group 1, or because it's nitrate, say it either way. Silvers are pretty much always going to precipitate out, except for nitrates. A couple other exceptions, but not a lot. Ag2S solid. Okay, so what do I have here? 2 Ag plus aqueous and an S2 minus aqueous. Okay? That's our net ionic, and remember we have to make sure that those are always balanced. Okay, number seven. Do a partner exchange, Ni, OH sub 2, and NaCl. I'm going to balance by putting a 2 there. I'm going to put a 2 there. Group 1 makes this one aqueous. Hydroxides are typically soluble with group 1 and group 2, but nickel is a transition metal, so we're going to call that the solid. That gives us an NiOH sub 2 solid. What goes into that? Nickel 2 plus aqueous, 2 OH minus aqueous. Okay. Number 8. Al. OH sub 3 and KNO3. I'm going to need to put a 3 on the KOH. I'm going to need to put a 3 on the KNO3. Aqueous because of the nitrate or because of the potassium, say either way. This is going to be the solid. So Al OH sub 3 solid. We get an Al3 plus aqueous and 3 OH minus aqueous. Okay. All right. Partner exchange. NiNO3 sub 2, K2SO4. Got to balance that with a 2. Hey, wait a minute. These are both aqueous. <laughs> that's a nitrate, and that's a group 1, so no reaction here. Not going to happen. Okay. Nickel carbonate and lithium sulfate. All righty. So lithium, so that's aqueous. Nickel carbonate, that'll precipitate. So NiCO3 solid. That's going to be a nickel 2 plus aqueous and a CO3 2 minus aqueous. Okay. So you can always go back and pause this, rewatch any of those that you need to. Okay. We're going to flip over. We're going to look at the other side now. Okay. There are a couple here that get a little more complicated. Nickel 2 sulfate with barium hydroxide. Okay, so nickel 2 sulfate is NiSO4. Barium hydroxide is BaOH sub 2. When those come together, I get NiOH sub 2 and BaSO4. And both of those we saw on the front precipitate. So what we have here is Ni2 plus aqueous plus SO4 to minus aqueous plus Ba2 plus aqueous plus 2OH minus aqueous to give me NiOH sub 2 solid and BaSO4 solid. All right. Now, next we've got our ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH. 
we've got our iron 3 chloride, FeCl3. What are they going to give us? That's going to give us an FeOH sub 3. three there and I need to put a three there. Ammoniums are always soluble. Iron hydroxide is going to be a solid. So I've got an Fe3 plus aqueous, 3Cl minus aqueous to give me, I'm sorry, sorry folks, 3OH minus aqueous to give me FeOH sub 3 solid. Okay. Magnesium sulfate, MgSO4. All of these are aqueous to begin with, plus potassium nitrate, KNO3. That would give us K2SO4 and MgNO3 sub 2. Uh, you know what? Nitrate, aqueous. Potassium there, aqueous, that's a no reaction. Okay. Calcium chloride and sodium sulfate. So we have a CaCl2 and an Na2SO4 to give us a CaSO4 and an NaCl. I'd have to put a 2 there. Calcium sulfate's kind of a tricky one. Uh, this one's aqueous. Calcium sulfate, I tend to say it precipitates. Okay. I think on the official rules, it's uh, listed as a slightly soluble. CaSO4 soluble. Solid, sorry. 2 plus aqueous plus SO4, 2 minus aqueous. Calcium sulfate, I believe, is referred to as plaster of Paris. Okay. Ammonium sulfide is NH4 sub 2 S and lead to nitrate is PBNO3 sub 2 to give me PBS and NH4NO3. I'm going to need to put a 2 there to balance this out. Well, nitrates we know. Soluble, but the PBS is not. So PBS is the solid. And PB2 plus and S2 minus aqueous for both give us that precipitate. Okay. Copper 2 chloride and sodium sulfate. CuCl2 and Na2SO4 to give us CuSO4 and NaCl. I'm going to need a 2 there. Table salt we know is completely soluble. Actually, so is copper sulfate. So that's another one of the no reactions. And uh, you can rest assured that on the tests, I'm never going to give you ones that are no reactions. They'll always react. Barium hydroxide, BaOH sub 2, and zinc sulfate, ZnSO4, BaSO4, and ZnOH sub 2. We know that's a solid. But this is a hydroxide of a transition metal, which is also going to be a solid. So this is one of those double precipitates again. B plus aqueous and we're also going to have an SO4 to minus aqueous to give me the BaSO4 solid and the ZnOH sub 2 solid. Okay. lead nitrate and the potassium iodide partner exchange PBI2 KNO3 I'm going to need to put a 2 there and a 2 there nitrates always aqueous now this 
is one of the uh, exceptions. Chloride, bromide iodides are pretty soluble except lead, mercury, silver. So PBI2, which is a brilliant yellow precipitate. PB2 plus aqueous, 2I minus aqueous gives me the PBI2 solid. Okay. Now, Fe, NO3 sub 2 plus Na3PO4 to give me FePO4 plus NaNO3. I'm going to need a 3 on that. Okay. All the nitrates are soluble. Iron phosphate is going to be a solid. So we have Fe3 plus aqueous plus the PO4, 3 minus aqueous to give me FePO4 solid. Okay. And now for our last one, we have barium hydroxide and copper sulfate mixing to give us barium sulfate. I recognize right away as a solid. I've done it a few times today. And copper hydroxide, I also recognize as a solid. We've done that today. So what I'm going to end up with is a double precipitate one more time. Ba2 plus aqueous plus 2OH minus aqueous plus Cu2 plus aqueous plus sulfate aqueous to give me BaSO4 solid and CuOH sub 2 solid. All right. So go back, pause, adjust, however is necessary, okay, for you to get caught up on this. If you are more comfortable doing it with complete ionic equations, go for it. Do the complete ionics. I prepared this video as a review for AP chemistry. I think most of the people in AP are going to be comfortable enough to go straight from the molecular to the net ionic. But if you want to do the complete ionic, you are more than welcome to. Okay, this is Morgan signing off.